this weekend, just like last weekend, he's the only one that really puts a threat to Chase. It is rare, really rare, that you have somebody who races like they come from nothing, but had a choice to race. You know what? Hey, get from over there. Get out of there. Go. Get out of there. Don't go over there. Don't. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there. Don't you do it. Don't. Don't you do it. What am I talking about, people? I'm talking about the danger zone. Little James. Bubba. Duck to you in the AMA Hall of Fame. But Stewart has found a way to redefine this whole race course. Oh my goodness. Fastest guy I've ever seen on a bike. He will win his second world championship. You can call him whatever you want. He'll still kick your ass every Sunday. What's up, guys? You know who it is, your boy JS. And you know where we at? We at the Rewind Show, baby. From round 10 of Pro Motocross from Bud's Creek, Maryland. One of the best tracks on the circuit. Where the scrub was born out, Henry Hill, and also where we witness history, history this weekend, and somebody in the danger zone. We also saw the return of the four-time champion, that was Beast Mode, Eli Tomac. He tried to go up against Chase Sexton, Hunter Lawrence on the 25. Would he be better? Would the other guys show up? And it was a great day of racing like it always was. You still can't pass on that racetrack, but that's all right, because you know what we got to do. We're going to get into it and break it down anyway. Let's do it. Round 10. Here we go. If I can get a start, I ain't backing down today. I don't care uh, I don't care what the subject is. I want to win. So uh, I'm going to go out there, obviously, try and execute my start and go have some fun. So coming into Buzz Creek, we all kind of knew what was going on. Chase Sexton was closing in on that championship. Hunter Lawrence just got the new 25. And any hopes that he had to win this title, he was going to need a little bit of help from Chase Sexton. Going to Buzz Creek, the track layout is always one of the favorites. Like it's not, it gets rough, it gets hot, but it's a safe racetrack. And the reason that is because the soil has that clay has a hard base but it also like it gives a little bit so there's a little bit more forgiveness in the conditioning um on the soil condition on that top part which allows these guys to have a little bit better feel compared to like unadilla as that day goes on as that track hardens up those ruts don't give so going into buzz creek it's a little bit safer but you can't pass it's really bad for passing, and it seems like over the last few years, it's just gotten like a little bit harder and harder to pass. So coming into this, Hunter Lawrence was going to have to hope that Chase Sexton had some kind of issues, one mechanically or whatever it was. He got a bad start. Don't seem like that's going to help him. The doobie coming up anyway, but he needed something to happen. So championship-wise, he needed some luck. Well, we'll start with Hunter Lawrence. Ever since Hunter got on that 25 Honda, it's been better. Like visually, it looks better. He looks better, but really it comes down to is that, as I said last weekend, he thinks it's better. So that's all that matters. You could put him on the tricycle. If he feels like it's going to be better, he's going to ride better. And when he rides better, he gives a Chase Exxon a handful, at least for the first moto. And I even think the second motos too, which I'll talk about that in a second. But Hunter Lawrence was the closest one to Chase. And if you look at the last two weekends, he's won him and Chase has split motos. Chase has had the probably more dominant motos. Hunter's been able to beat him like in the first moto, like barely hanging on. But second motos, I think this weekend, tire set up, last weekend, bad start. But Hunter's kind of been there and he's been better since he's been on the 25 because he thinks it's better. Now, I I, I wouldn't say it's disappointing at all I, I don't think so I think a lot of us forget that Hunter is a rookie and because of his brother because of how he looked in the beginning part of the championship you know getting a race win pretty early being there at the first moto actually bound on with his brother I think people kind of looked at him as he should be closer to Chase and and likely like he is he just caught Chase Exton like 
get more confidence, more bike and, and all this stuff. But Hunter's riding really good. He had like a three way stretch there after he crashed at red butt where he hurt his shoulder. Um, he's been struggling a little bit, but overall, like he's only 28 points down on this dude that's had like the best season of his career and some of the rides that we'll always kind of remember hang town, you know, some of these coming from the pack. So Hunter's been doing solid. I think for him is that because of his brother, because of his team and because of his pedigree, we just kind of expect more. But in reality, like I said, Hunter is doing good and he needs to realize that. So this weekend, just like last weekend, he's the only one that really puts a threat to Chase. Well, he is the only one that's close to Chase. He is the only one that's kind of beat Chase. I mean, I don't know how many other people like won motos besides them. I don't really think anybody. So that's kind of an oxymoron. But my point is, he's the only one that really gives Chase a worry. Right. Like if Chase doesn't get a good start, he has to look up and be like, oh, what 96 is. OK, 96 still right there. And he rides. I think Hunter's been playing this thing smart. The first motos, it's not all about like speed. His motos are broken down. And I talked about that last few weekends, even at Millville, how he plays the races. And ever since he's got on a 25, I do think he has a little bit better speed that before it was like, okay, I'll get a start. My whole shot, that's number one. I gotta be in front, gotta be in front off the jump. I don't think I can come up through the pack and chase this dude down. This is pre 25. Um, so I get a start. Let me see where Chase is. I put a couple hot laps. Let me see where Chase is. Oh man, damn, he's right there. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for the battle because we know Chase doesn't really get going, uh, at least for the first motor, it doesn't get going until you know, 10 minutes into it. So it gives you a chance to build a maybe sneak away or possibly crash. Well, since he had the 25, he's been able to, to, to have that mindset, but he has a little bit better speed to where I think he feels like he can actually run a pace that makes Chase make some mistakes, AKA first moto this weekend. Hunter gets out front, Chase comes in and to me, the track layout, how good Hunter was riding. I think it was really hard for guys, even Chase, for him to catch Hunter or catch makeup time on people. Well, James, I mean, what he did to second moto. Well, I get to that in a minute. I get to that. So first moto, Hunter's out front, and Chase really was, he was right there but he really couldn't catch him. And I think the reason because of that was because where he was and he was behind Aaron and Chase really never had a clear track. And with this racetrack, you can make up time on guys if you're alone. But if you get behind somebody because of the lines and how it's, uh, difficult it is to pass when you catch lappers or just trying to pass somebody who's right in front of you, it makes it really difficult and you, you, don't, have, you don't have the opportunity to run these lines to go fast around a racetrack. This racetrack is like NASCAR in a sense where you won't pull. You don't see guys getting pulled when they're right behind somebody, right behind somebody. Unless they're getting towed, we don't need the tow. We don't need the air, like with aerodynamics, we don't really need that. So in this sense, you need a clear racetrack just like NASCAR. You let those guys go out when they do their pull, they were going out one by one. Well, this is how this racetrack is. So guys who get a clear racetrack, Chase got a clear racetrack at second moto, if he's out front, clear racetrack, he can set pole. If he's in the pack or he's got to pass somebody, he's stuck behind him. And that's how this track was. So when you look at that first moto, Hunter was out front and it was like three seconds, four seconds, three seconds, four seconds. And Chase could close in. But then once he got there, he would end up losing time. Like it was really hard for Chase to, to, to actually get to him. And a lot of that, again, was came down to the track. So Hunter had a plan, but he also knew the racetrack was somewhat going to tame that plane, uh, plan with Chase and just the outright speed. Because no matter what, if he caught him, he was going to have a hard time passing him. Well, same thing happened in the second moto. But the first moto, Chase was coming, and it was getting late at the end of the race. Chase ends up making a mistake. Now, I don't think it was Chase overriding the motorcycle. I just think it was Chase kind of pushing and getting maybe a little bit frustrated that he couldn't get to Hunter because of the layout and Hunter was like going faster. 
wouldn't say faster, but Hunter was getting closer to the end. So he kept pushing a little bit harder. And where weeks passed, I think Hunter would get out, look, see where Chase was. All right, he's right there. Okay, I'm just wait for the battle. Now, since he's got 25, Hunter has a little bit more speed. So he can kind of put Chase in a, um, a tougher situation, more like his brother, and possibly Chase would fall over like he did. Now, second moto, Hunter... I wouldn't say Hunter made the wrong decision because, and this is about the tire. It was either a paddle tire or the standard uh, knobby tire. Hunter went with the paddle tire, the, the scoop tire, the one that's going to be better for the start, not necessarily better for the racetrack. And I believe KTM, I'm almost positive KTM went with the, the scoop tire. Actually, I know because I was there. I asked. So as the track got going, and especially that second moto, that track got hard, right? So as I was saying, I don't think Hunter made a wrong decision. I don't think he made the right decision. I just think it was a decision that he made, and that decision was that decision. Because you can't say it was the wrong decision because he feels like he needs to be in front of Chase, which he does, right? So if he doesn't get a start and the scoop tire doesn't give him the start or the, the knobby tire, the regular one, Chase gets in front of him, then you're going to lose anyway, right? You're going to lose anyway. Even if the bike works on the, on the track, right, you, you believe you're going to lose. So you got to start in front of him. So that's the reason it goes the scoop tire. But if you go with the other one and your bike works better, as I said, his mindset was he needs to be in front of Chase. Now, my personal opinion, weeks pass, yeah. Yeah, I would say you you probably needed to be because – you wasn't riding up to your potential, the bike, you were kind of struggling and Chase was on a roll. Now, when you look at every track is different, every circumstance is different. If I was working with Hunter, I probably would have told him, look, believe in yourself, kid, like you're riding better than weeks. So your mindset of how it was in the past, like you don't have to be in front of him. Why? Because you can pass him. Well, you're going to need to be able to go in different lines to be able to pass him. That means you're going to need a tire that's going to work on the racetrack to pass him because you're riding better. I feel like with the tire choice that he made, almost put him back how he was on the 24 in the sense of the bike was, wasn't where he needed to be at. Like he, he lost the speed that he had because the tire that he chose, he couldn't ride the racetrack. He was struggling on, um, you know, traction he had to stay in the corners, which basically on a track that's already one line, he already had to, it, he made it more narrow because he couldn't ride on a hard pack. Where you saw Chase, Chase could go anywhere. So if I was Hunter, if I was working with Hunter, I would have told him, look, dude, you're riding better. So let's 86 to pass. If you don't get a start, most likely he ain't going to get a start. And if he does get a start, he's going to leave you like he did last weekend too. Well, I might have left that part out. You know what I mean? I left that part out. I said, if you've got to start, you can run him down unlike you did last weekend. That's what I would have said. So I would have just told him that you're riding better, so you would have been able to, like, catch him. But the only way you're going to be able to catch him is that you need the bike to work. And this start, the way this layout is, is kind of, like, up in the air. Scoop tire, no scoop tire, paddle tire, no paddle tire, road race tire, you know, whatever it is. If you don't get a jump, you get pinched off. Ask Danger Boy, ask Chase X in the second moto. If you don't get a jump, it don't really matter. If you get a paddle tire and you get on the outside and you don't get a jump, it don't really matter. But what matters is that if you don't get a jump and you don't got a tire that works on a racetrack, you in a bad situation because you can't pass on this racetrack anyway. And then the tire setup won't even allow you to think about passing because you're going to be sliding out. You're going to be worried about sliding out than anything else. So I'm sorry, people, for the brand. But my whole point was I would try to convince him to go the other way because previous weeks, he's a different rider. Well, he chose the paddle tire, and you can see it was, it was a struggle. And he was losing a lot of times in the corners. Like he couldn't really go on the insides because anytime he would lean, um, he would lose the rear end. And this ain't a Dunlop thing. This ain't a, it's a bad tire. This is a choice, which they obviously had to think about that choice that they knew it wasn't going to work good um, on the hard pack. Well, when he rode the prey lap, that track dried out quite a bit. And for Hunter's defense, 
the track never got to that point until it got to that point. And the only time it got to that point was when it got to that point. And the only point it got was when it was at that point. And that was the second moto when it was at that point. Well, he didn't know it was at that point until you rode around the track. And he was like, damn, it's at this point. It's too dry. But at this point, as a rider, you commit it. So you're like, damn, whatever. I'm at the point now that I'm just going to commit. Well, he committed with his thing. And as he went, you could tell the first laugh, he was like, oh, man, made a, mis- made a mistake. So last weekend, I thought he rode better at Unadilla. He was able to get up to second. This weekend, I thought he rode better at Buzz Creek, but he struggled with the tires. So my whole point is, I think Hunter is closer to Chase, even in the second motos, that um, obviously he has been in weeks prior before he switched to bikes. I think he's just right there. But the results would say he's not even close because of the circumstances. And I don't believe that's true. Unfortunate part is that we got one more race of outdoors and then all hell breaks loose with the playoffs. He's only going to have to prove it. But Hunter's run better. I think the choice, the tired choice is Monday quarterbacking. Even though I was like saying that on, on Saturday, I get it. I've been there as a rider. You go with what you're comfortable with. He believes he needs to be in front, which he does. And he just made the choice and, you know, it backfired. But at the end of the day, he was right there. So, Hunter, keep your thing up. Honda, keep y'all, keep doing what you're doing. They'll continue to work on the bike. I think it's better. It's few places that it could be better. But Hunter rode a good. He rode really good. Bike's better. And I think he'll continue to uh, get chase a run the next two motos because that's all we got and then there's no more now i'm going to talk about eli tomac before i get in chase sexton who else was out there racing there's some other guys racing mookie fever mookie fever rode good he rode solid he was out there i tried to tell cooper even though we don't got radios he couldn't tell i tried to tell cooper bruh Look here, end of the moto, you caught Malcolm. Malcolm's riding good. Now, with as many laps left, Malcolm's probably like, dude, this fifth place is fine. This fifth place is fine, right? He might have battled you or he might have not. I don't know, but he was riding good. He made you have to ride really good, and you needed those points. So he, you, I knew what you were going to try to do because you needed those points. Well, bro, you can't go around the outside on the fever. You just can't. You just can't. Even if he's going to let you go by, you just can't go around the outside. And I tried telling you that in the cast. I was like, oh, bro, you can't even go on the outside. You know that. Everybody knows that. You just can't ride around. Just like Jason Anderson. He could be tired. He could be doing it. But you, look, look, man, I'm so tired, but I got enough energy to, to I can't let you ride around the outside. I got a reputation to hold up. Well, that's what it was. So I tried telling Jay Coop, who rode good, had a tough break that first moto jumping into Hunter Lawrence, but Real good all day long, and he tried going around the outside. And then he tried going around the outside again, and I was like, man, I just tried telling you you can't go around the outside. And then eventually Malcolm let him buy it because he didn't go around the outside. There it is. So he rode good. When you want to talk about the track, it's difficult to pass. When Justin went down, for a guy like him to only be able to get up to 20th place in that first moto, unless he crashed like five other times at somewhere else, that just shows you how difficult that track was. And you saw people really struggling all day long to to come up to the pack. Now, Eli Tomac, Eli was back. Eli was back. And I actually think Eli's... Personally, I actually thought Eli looked better this time than he even did at Anaheim, right? Like, to me, when I looked at him, he looked like Eli Tomac. Now, the race situation, the races are whatever. The race is a hit and miss. Emotionally, the first moto, Eli is riding good. He gets a bad start. He's coming up. Now, I think if Eli was up battling with, per se, I don't know if he runs Chase Pace or even Hunter. I mean, even at Aaron at this point. But, I mean, he's riding pretty good, especially the first moto this weekend. I would say Eli would be able to run that pace. You put him up in the first moto. The problem was he got a bad start, and when he got up to fourth place, those guys were gone. And I was talking about on the broadcast that Eli's going to have a difficult time because he's going to end up realizing that he can't catch those guys, and then he's going to start riding behind them. 
And it's just naturally all riders do that is when you're in no man's land, like if you don't have that rabbit to chase, it's hard to push forward because you know, like the way this track is, he's 10 seconds in front of me. I ain't going to be able to catch this dude. And Jason Anderson's just close enough that he ain't right on me that I got to think about him, but he's close enough that I got to think about him. And if I'm not chasing somebody like I was when I passed Jason and pulled away, he's going to catch me because he obviously can chase me. I don't have anybody to chase. He can chase me. So it was going to be difficult for Eli. And that's what happened. He got in a fourth place. I do believe if you put him up there with those guys that he would at least run that pace for a little bit. But because he didn't have, he wasn't there and he didn't have anybody to chase. It looked like Eli was just the fourth fastest of the weekend. No, Eli wrote way better that first moto than the results say. So he was fine. Where at Anaheim, it, it didn't look like, to me this weekend, when I said it, it, he looks better than he did at Anaheim. So the difference between Anaheim and here, when I look at it, and this is what I mean, is that he looked like he was there to race, almost having fun. He didn't look like he was one toe in, one toe out you know, whether he's going to retire or not. And considering that he missed the end of the Supercross, he missed all outdoors. He missed all the outdoors last year too. So it's been uh, two years since he's been on outdoors. He comes at the end of the season. He don't know where the bike is. He don't know where the competition is. Fact is like in practice, he was Eli Toback. Like the, the speed, the speed that he was lacking is natural. Don't look at what you saw in practice. Actually look at what you saw in practice. Be like, damn, he's that close. Because to be out two years, to have Chase Sexton rolling, have a track that everyone loves, be in the setup that one, one, it was raining. And then two, these guys are racing for a championship. Hunter's got a new bike. Everybody knows you, Eli Tomac. The last thing they want you to do is come back and be like Eli Tomac. So everybody puts their best foot forward, but you were still close enough to be right there. So the speed gap that you didn't have is normal because you haven't been here. And that intensity of knowing where these guys' pace is to just jump in this class to be that close, you don't know where that pace is. So you, you're you going to be slower. You're just going to be naturally slower. If you come in here and you haven't raced in forever and you're the fastest, you got to be like JS7 or something like that. You know what I mean? you got to be a person. All right. I, I wasn't, sometimes I was like 10 seconds fast. It's like slow. I remember coming from practice. This is like at the end of my career. I remember going, doing a hot lap in practice and be like, oh, yes. Yes, I know that's pole, baby. What, 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 what? Looking at the board and think to myself like, oh, it must be broken. Oh, that's got to be broken. And then my mechanic coming in and be like, oh, bro, you like 10th. So Eli didn't have to feel that. So Eli knew he was in a good spot. He wasn't going to be that fast or the fastest of them just because he hasn't been here. But the difference between here and Anaheim is that like he just looked like he wanted to go race. He was smiling and all that. And I wonder if part of that is just because it's he's more comfortable outdoors. I think we forget because he hasn't raced the last few years. Jet's been so dominant that this dude won four titles in a row, had that crazy uh, in 2022 with Chase Sexton having to go down to the last race and win. Anytime that he had to win, he did it. Even when other guys was faster, he did it. That's who we're talking about. We're talking about Beast Mode. But because how the Supercross season went, because he was talking about retiring, we kind of look at Eli a little bit different. So when Eli showed up here, he showed up more like, Dang, that's the guy that I always suspected to see. So it was good to see. Second moto, yeah, you get a bad start. Yeah. All right, whatever. Like, whatever. And if you want to know how Eli wrote, listen to AP after that first moto. AP is Captain Mary. He is president. When I'm in a bad mood, I turn me on some AP. That's what I be. I be rocking to the AP. That's what I need. I get hype. I feel better about life. AP. I'm ap -ing. Well, AP needed to listen to AP because you heard in his voice. He got third. And yeah, he, I'm sure he was a little disappointed that like those guys pulled away, but they pulled away in the past. AP was thinking about, but Eli, Eli was, Eli was too close. He wasn't close, but he was too close. 
AP recognized that. Yeah, yeah, I had a good flow there in the uh, in the first part of that race, and then, man, I just started making mistakes and mistake after mistake after mistake, and little ones add up, and and man, they just walked away from me, and I was uh, I was a little bummed at that, but uh, I was more focused on keeping the number three behind me, and and man, he was turning some fast laps there. Uh, there early on, but, uh, but no, it was a good race all in all. You know, you can't really ask more for uh, or than a podium. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm stoked to be up here again. Maybe uh, we can uh, get an even better start next time and, and uh, yeah, ride, uh, ride up front for a little bit longer. Uh, I'm still learning uh, what these guys are doing. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a mystery to me right now. Dude, if he's coming back trying to get on the Motocross the Nations team, first race back, he's this close. I wasn't able to like just dog him out. I don't like this. So I think a part of that was not AP feeling like, man, Hunter and Chase, they just ran off on me. I think it was about Eli and how Eli was kind of there. And when Eli was in that no man's uh, lane, when Eli was in that no man zone, like, and he couldn't catch him. AP kind of knew that. Like, he knew he had that gap that he wouldn't be able to catch him. But since that, he was still there. He didn't really fade. He didn't really do anything. And he was, like, right behind. AP was thinking about that because I think the Captain America and Team USA is still up in the air. And they wanted to see what um, Eli was doing. Now, the second motor, as I said, what we saw in 250 class, what we saw most times, even Justin Cooper. Like, you get a bad start, you're going to be battling back. What up, Phil? What up? What up, Phil? You're going to be getting possibly cheers. Harry Kulas, all them dudes. That's where you're going to be battling at. They're going to be battling at. Like, you just can't really do anything because you're going to try to pass people. You're going to get frustrated. And then you're going to get tired because you haven't been here anyway. And that's what happened to Eli in the second moto. So don't even worry about the second moto. Look at how he looked first moto. Look how he looked in practice. Eli is back. Now, going into this weekend, Eli can do what he did this weekend. Like, going into Indy, the last race, Ironman. He can go like 4, 18, whatever, cool. What you're looking for is the head, get that, you know how you like going to the corner, he's like, that's what you're looking for. If he ain't got that head swag and that head ain't look like it's half chopped off, he ain't doing that, feet on the pegs, doing that stuff, we got a problem. But he was doing it this weekend, and I expect him to do it um, next weekend or this weekend coming up at an Ironman. And I wouldn't be shocked if he won a race. I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up on the podium. Eli wants to be up there, and I do believe he can and probably will be up there because last time he raced there, he had a good race. So um, Eli Tomac was fine. AP, second moto, you, you heard him. He ended up in the same spot. Same spot. Same thing happened. Chase Sexton fell. Chase Sexton got up. Chase Sexton passed you, and then it was gone. But you saw the difference in attitude. Why? Because he wasn't there. Eli wasn't there. Now, I don't know. I know AP could have been thinking about something else, right? But it just seemed to me he was thinking about that. Second motor, he didn't have to think about that. He was just in a happy mood. And it was back to my AP cell. After I listened to AP to second motor, I was like, man, I'm AP. I feel good. So good job, AP. Man, win one of these things, bro. Get your neck burned this weekend. Indy, come on. Come on, I can't believe you haven't won one of these. Like, they told me that stat. I was like, nah, you're wrong. You're wrong. And then he, I was like, wait, they're right. AP way too damn good. AP, come on, bro. You got your first ever Supercross. It's about time. You know how to win these things. You're a 250 champion. Get it done. You know what the number four? I had to ride the number four, too. I raced against him. He was crazy. He was good. He did everything that he did to you like he was doing to me. I ain't like it. So, one time, I just said, well, watch you go. I was like, ah, ah, I'm going to take him out. Yeah, I ain't saying doing that because, you know, you got to get a championship. But, hell, win one of these things. Like, you got it. So, you fine, AP. What up, Jade? So, you're doing good. Now, Jay Sexton. Look here, people. This weekend was kind of fun because Chase Sexton's been just dominant. I think when Chase Sexton shows up, first moto, he, he knows, like, all right, Hunter's probably going to be pretty good. Hunter's going to be probably pretty good. I'm still kind of sleeping or whatever. I still, last weekend, I got a good start, and I was gone. They held the gate forever, and maybe that's why I got a good start. Everybody else is looking up. I don't know. But 
First moto, he knows he's going to have to race. Second moto, I think he shows up. No, I actually don't think he shows up. He know he's going to win. He know he's going to win. That's the difference to me. First moto, second moto, one, he just knows those guys are fresh. Nothing really changes except for he knows he's going to win the second moto, and that's what he does. Doesn't it get you – don't you feel that? Like, when you watch the first moto, you feel like those guys maybe have a chance – a second moto, no matter what happens, don't you feel like he going to win anyway? Well, that's because he's going to win anyway. Chase feels that way, and it really comes down to mind control. So first moto, track was difficult to pass on. Hunter was riding really good. Chase, Chase was struggling trying to get to Hunter because of the way the track setup was. Now, when you look at this race, when guys, and this really played out for the second moto, so I'll just talk about the second moto. First moto, he went down. Okay, cool. He, he would have a hard time catching him. And my keys of the race was track position. And just speaking on the track before I go into the segment, speaking on the track, what, the start is so important here. One, because it's a 180. One, because it's another reason. It's because it's unfair. If you're on the outside, you, you can't really get a whole shot. The only thing that you can do is... Basically, when the guy's on the inside is breaking, just run straight, and hopefully you can do your best case every TT, like power slide around the outside, and then come out like fifth. That's your whole shot if you're on the outside. Otherwise, you're going to end up like Max Anstey. Guys be banging all of this stuff. And when you look at the corner, the far inside is the best gate. The far, like maybe five gates is the preferred position. But if you're confident on the start, then you can go closer to the box and get that angle so when the guys break on the inside like you have a better arc and that's what ends up happening because if you're on the inside you have to break sooner than the guys on the outside so you can if you're on the outside once those guys break you can gas it a little bit but you just got to be able to know how to like power slot that thing around the corner that's why when you saw in the, the motos guys who got like the whole shot went into the co first corner by themselves like they had the angle because everybody else broke, uh, was on the break and they were out there by themselves. So Hunter Lawrence was on the outside inside. It actually goes back to the, the right on the left handed corner. So the guys on the inside, you actually have to take off and you have to start moving back. Well, nonetheless, first moto chase was like fifth, sixth place. Hunter was like third. But when you look at this racetrack from the gate, till basically right before you go up to the uh fly triple or whatever or big gulp in the middle something like that you can't pass so the time that chase lost to hunter on that first lap go look at it from the time that chase lost to him just go all the way to first lap to hinder hill look at that gap well that gap was there the whole moto hunter went to the lead chase came up it was same gap so the time that he lost that first lap because Hunter was in front of him a couple of positions, that's where that race stayed at. And Chase would be able to catch him when he had a clear racetrack, but he had to make up that gap and he had a hard time doing it because he lost that time the first, um, the first lap. This track is notorious for that. If you get a 10th place start, forget it, forget it. Now, when people say, Jay, you went from 40th to first, well, they ain't all like me can't do what i do nah but for real the track was different the track was different you had the off camber it was going the other way and going the other way it does allow even though it's really hard to pass it it helps you has more passing opportunities but even when i went to four, uh last to first in six laps i ain't gonna say nothing people don't know about that race it looked like on tv because the whole race Back then, they had commercials and all that stuff. ESPN was trying to, you know, keep it a little bit short. That whole race was like eight minutes. But people don't realize that I would, I passed all those guys in like six laps. I, it wasn't even halfway when I got there. So, so the only way to pass here is you got to be really good at passing, which means you got to predict what's about to happen, or it's going the other way, or guys making a mistake. So if guys are riding really good, it's hard to pass. So the whole point is Chase lost that time in the beginning. He had a hard time getting there, and then we all know what happened. He fell over. But second moto, same thing was happening. Hunter's out front. AP's there. Chase had a nice line in the rollers. 
Now, lead us or not, I think the reason Chase won that second moto is because he crashed. I really do. Why you say that is because, again, this track's hard to pass. It's really easy to get sucked into somebody's pace, just like Chase did the first moto. When you're close to somebody and on this racetrack, one, you know, going outside, it's only one line to run. It's like the NASCAR, like I said. You need that pole position, that clean air. This track is that way. So, you know, if you go outside, you're going to lose time. And the way the track was, because it was muddy earlier and it became like one or two lines, um, it was difficult to pass. So, AP, right in front of you, Hunter is in front of you, just like the first moto, you get sucked in that pace. It's hard to pass. You can't really do anything. That's what was happening that second moto chase got around AP. Then he went after Hunter, but he really couldn't because he was already kind of sucking that pace. Now when, what happened was chase crashed, chase crashed, clear racetrack, clear racetrack. He was able to get around my brother. Then he had to run down AP. Once he ran down AP, those lap two laps, what happened was one, he was upset. He knew he had to go back and win the race because he didn't want to lose overall. But Chase just naturally in the second motor just feel like he's going to win. Like I said, he was able to get back into his flow and realize that I got way more pace than I was when I caught Aaron. But when I catch these dudes, if I get stuck behind them like I was earlier and I start running that pace, it's going to be hard to win. So when I get to them, I am going past them. And Chase had a pace that he just flew past those dudes. And I believe the reason he had that pace was because he went down and he had a clean racetrack and he found out how fast he was and how easy it was to catch him. Well, Jay, what happened in the beginning? Because he had to run him down. Well, in the beginning, people are bunched up. You ain't ready to go that fast anyway. So Chase caught and he was right behind Aaron early in that race. So he settled into their pace. Once Aaron, once he went down, that gap went, Chase let it go. And just mentally, he saw how fast he was that's why when you heard Aaron on the um, podium, he was like, dude, I was worried about Hunter because Chase was like, wait, like, I'm going to say way back. Chase wasn't even close to him. This all happened in like one lap, two laps. Chase wasn't even close to him. And Aaron knows it's difficult to, it's hard to make up time on this track. Hard to make up time. Chase was right in front of me the first moto. He passed me. Chase was right here just right now, this 10 minutes, 15 minutes into this race. He was right here. So I know how much pace he was. So when Aaron was like, I was worried about Hunter, and then all of a sudden I heard the revs, and damn, that dude was gone. That's because even Aaron was like, whoa, he wasn't going that fast all day. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. But he was stuck behind you, so he didn't have that open track, and he didn't realize that he could go that fast all day because even in practice, it's hard to get a clear um, racetrack to be able to hit that pace. And then in the first moto, second moto, he was always behind somebody. That was the first time that once he got in the third place after he, uh, he got around my brother, he had an open track that he can run that pace. Well, that's what happened. And that's what Aaron was like, dude, I didn't know where he came from. Then he ran down Hunter. I didn't know what he came from. So all that came from, all that came was because he crashed and he had a clear racetrack and he realized how fast he was. And then he just went flying past the dude. So as crazy as it sounds, he would have had a hard time winning that race just like he did the first moto if he wouldn't have crashed because he crashed was the reason why when he got up, he flew past that ass. He flew past because Chase went into beast mode and all the past history, second moto, you know I'm a win. I know I'm a win. Everybody knows I'm a win. I'm sure it's probably going to get tired. I'm tired, but I know you think that I don't get tired. And, you know, when I get in beast mode, I just, I'm just that way. So, because the crash allowed him to be in that mode and then past history sunk in all those guys like, damn, all right, whatever, whatever. Because he went flying past them and then he was gone just like that. And if you look at it, you'd be like, well, why didn't he do that first moto? Why didn't he do that earlier? Well, because he was stuck behind those guys and he got stuck in their pace. And then when you go down, he had a clear, clear racetrack and booyah, there he was. So Chase Sexton, look here, bro. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. First moto last weekend, Hunter rode good. He got you. Got you. This weekend, Hunter rode good. He got you. 
he got you. Second moto, last weekend, you rode good. No, you rode better. No, you hold shot. That race was over in one lap, not even one lap. It was half lap. This second moto, you had to... You had to realize how fast she was. The only way you're going to realize is if you get the, you get some clean air. First time you had all day, you can get those tips. You can be like, ah, ah, let that KTM breathe, breathe. Just like in MotoGP, you got to get that cool air on those tires. Man, get them down. Tire's going to work. Hunter was struggling on the paddle. And then all you did, you bust out your paddle and you start whooping, whooping. Aaron Fletcher was like, I'm about to get Hunter. I'm about to get Hunter. And then I was like, oh, then he was like, I'm just APing. I was just worried about Eli anyway. I don't even like Eli. I don't even, oh, he likes Eli. But you know what I mean. Nobody was suspecting what that happened. And then when it happened, they were like, man, what do you expect? It always happened. And what keeps happening is this. Hit it for Suntan. Next on fire. Yes. That just happened again. Just like previous weekends. Just like the weekend before. Well, we didn't race the weekend before. But I know when you raced in, when we wasn't racing, you won Loretta's. You won the other weekends that we had off and we didn't even race. That's how much you win. So congratulations, kid. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. This weekend was tougher than you wanted to be, but then you realize it wasn't that tough because you were like, ah, I was just stuck in a pace. Sometimes you just get locked in and you just locked in. And all you do is get locked in to winning. That's what you call locked in. Chase Sexton, you're locked in. Congratulations. Only one more race. And then you get the first one ever. Wrap that thing up, kid. Hunter Lawrence doing good. AP, keep the attitude up. Win one of these things. I need it. I need it. Well, I don't need it. Well, I need it. I need me some AP. I want an AP. I'm about to go AP right now. I'm about to just get happy. There it is. I vote for you. Yep. Fill in your ballots. AP. All right. That was enough for 450 class. It get to the real time. <sighs> You know what? Hey, get from over there. Get out of there. Go. Get out of there. Don't go over there. Don't. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there. Don't you do it. Don't. Don't you do it. What am I talking about, people? I'm talking about the danger zone. It just happened. Hey, Diggin. This is all about you, son. It's all about you. Look here, kid. I remember when I remembered. When I was remember watching you, and I was like, damn, you came up short on that jump at Ironman in 2022, and you were like, I needed to be like two inches taller because my feet hit, and they hit, and they went flying, and that was a big hit. That's what I remember, and it was something that I'm always remember, and a lot of other people are going to remember, and I'm sure you remember that, but now I'm going to remember this, when Hayden Deegan won his first ever championship. Woo. Look here, kid. Damn. Damn. I said this to somebody one time. I said, you know what makes me impressive? I think maybe it was you guys. I was talking about it. You know what I get impressed with, Hayden? No. Um, yeah, he wins. He's good. That's not impressive. I mean, it is impressive. But other people win, too. Is he dominant? Uh, I mean, there's some other dominant dudes out there. You know, like there's some fast. I mean, look at Chase. I mean, I'm impressed with that too. Hayden had some races that is impressive. What is it? Is it Brian? Is it, what? what is it? Is it his attitude? Yes. Yes, it is his attitude. What makes me impressed by Hayden? It's not that all he wins and all this stuff and he got all these things because I expect that like the dude's good. The dude's good. It's because it is rare, really rare, that you have somebody who races like they come from nothing but had a choice to race, if that makes any sense. So what I'm trying to say is that Hayden had opportunities to do whatever. Like It wasn't like he grew up needing to, okay, the only way I'm going to make it in life is or it, survive in life if, if i race motorcycles or i do something i need money because that's what we need we need money like hayden didn't have that he had a choice to do stuff and not saying that hayden's like silver's fed and all that like i mean no no i ain't saying that at all but what i'm saying is that he had a choice 
to do whatever he wanted, but he chose this. But racing and anything else, like when you when you do something at this level, you got to have a reason why you want to go out there and risk your neck. You got to have a reason why you're willing to go out there and die for this. Like I have my reasons, right? And it all comes down to every other athlete. There's survival to it. Like there's a reason why you hear that's there's a reason why people love to go racing and they put all this effort. They're miserable. They have no childhood. They like the family's there, the family's pressure, like whatever it is. There's always a reason. Well, Hayden's situation, like he chose this. I chose racing. Like everybody chooses to do whatever they want to do. So even if you do have a reason, like the main reason is you love it. Like you do love it. And Hayden's not different in that sense to where he loves it, but he's different in the sense of, he had a choice and he chose that. So to get to this point and have the attitude that I want to win, I just want to rip your neck out. Like I can't have anyone else out there having any kind of success to have that kind of like determination and will and, and nastiness and just straight out, I'm going to dominate you attitude comes from like, well, if I don't do this, I can't eat. Right. Like, like if you go into work and you'd be like the, the person, your coworker, if you knew it was between you being able to feed your kids or you paying the light bill and him, well, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off and turn my hotspot on and don't give you the password. That's the modern day age, right? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure you don't survive because I need to survive, right? That's what Hayden has when he, doesn't have to turn dude's Wi-Fi off. Like, dude can be successful, whatever you want, but I'm still going to just cut the power to everybody because I want to win. I don't like you. That's what impressed me is about him. And I, I said this, you know, a few shows ago that I'm like, that's rare when you go, people who come from like nothing or people who have something, they just, they don't have the same fight. And it's impressive that Hayden does because he chose to be this way. He chose to go down this road, his all himself. And it just shows you how his mindset is and how much determination he has. And of course, he had his family, his whole program has been building him because they saw it in him. It's just rare to see that. And that's what makes me impressed with Hayden is that I can't go back and be like, well, dude, what do you expect? He had no choice. Dude, I'm going to eat. Like, what do you think? Like, he can't really like nothing. Nah. No, he just wanted to beat you down just because that's what he wants to do. And damn, that's impressive. So, hey, Deegan, that's, I I don't know how many times I'm going to say that's impressive. I'll say it one more time. It's impressive. That's what makes me happy and I enjoy watching Hayden because you look at that first moto, y'all, you think part of this stuff and the way he talks is an act. And it is, partly. But the act is, I'm doing this because I want to just break your neck. Like I'm doing this because I don't like you. I want to win. I don't want anybody else to win. He has that nastiness attitude. It's not nasty in that sense. It's just, he has attitude. I just, like I had, Ricky had, all these dudes had, like, you just don't want anybody else to win because hell, I just, I'm going to be selfish. So you think it's an act. And like I said, part of it is, but the act is the only to make sure he wins. But he had this championship on the line. Yeah, the pressure wasn't there. So maybe you got to think that, okay, maybe if it was a little bit closer, maybe he'll be a little bit different. Who knows? Like he had the pressure in Supercross. He didn't deal with it like he wanted to. He came in hurt. We saw what happened at Daytona, but then he got better. And also what makes Hayden special is that he continues to get better and he learns he learns and he doesn't seem like he makes the same mistakes like twice. Like he went through the Supercross, he got better. He came up short. He didn't come up short. You know, when he came up short a couple of years in Ironman. But my whole point is with Hayden, that first moto, dude went out there winning as, I think it was the most aggressive, the most I'm going to beat you down, I want to win attitude as he had all year long. As I said, maybe the points lead, he knew he really couldn't do much to really screw this up. Like the likelihood of it would be hard for Le Levi to build a, even if Hayden didn't race the last one, 
Levi can only lose five points. So that means he basically had to win in one second place. He wouldn't even win this championship if Hayden didn't race all the rest of the races. So he had a pretty good gap. I know my math might be off, but it was something like that. Like if Hayden got hurt, Le Levi still had to go out and basically win everything to just have a chance because he couldn't tie him because, well, actually, you know what? Hell, I ain't going to that. My whole point is he had some points to play with, but no, 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 no. Hayden wanted to go out and beat him down, like beat him down. So maybe that, again, was part, like he had that pressure off of him. But still, it's a championship. It's your first one. It ain't your 10th one. It's your first one. He wanted to go out there and he did it. And you heard him. And some people look at that as like, they don't like it. They don't like it. That's your choice. That's your opinion. You know, he could do things different. He cannot. But that's who he is. And who he is is the person that just wants to ring you out, even though there's nothing to lose there. I mean, there's nothing to gain for him. 50 seconds, whatever. Like, can you imagine if he went out there and because he wanted to ride that way, he got hurt? Oh, my God. Can you imagine the people tripping? He don't care. He don't care. Why he don't care is because, just like I said, he's when he started racing and he got this way because he wanted to be that way. Like, he made the choice. There was nothing really pushing him to be like, I have, I, I can't mess up because if I mess up, this is going to happen. No. If I mess up, like, it's just going to happen. So I ain't going to mess up because I want, I don't want to mess up. So when he goes out there and race the first moto and he's like, I'm going to just, Justin Cooper, I'm going to, I knew he was going to get tired. Uh, chance, thought he had a chance. Ah, he cooked. That's who he is. Like, that's, that's really his attitude. Like, that's it. And he wants to be that way because he wants to be that way. There ain't no other reason why. So that's impressive. So he goes out to first moto and he just beats y'all down, like straight up. And all the races this year, he hadn't been like that. Like, I haven't seen him disrespect anybody since he did Jerry Martin like that. He was doing it for a reason because he wouldn't let him know he'd be Hayden Deegan. But it ain't disrespectful, but it's just a point of when guys got championships, they ride with them tight britches no matter how you – how you ride? Like even when I won my first title and Supercross title, 07, man, I had a big points lead just like Hayden, but I couldn't do it. Like I, I wanted to go out there and I wanted to do it, but like I did it to the point where I was like, I was safe. I was safe. Now, circumstances are different, but the results ended up the same. And Hayden Deegan did something this weekend that was pretty impressive to me. Like the fact is he's Hayden Deegan and he got this way because all by himself, nobody else. He got this way because of his team around him, Brian, his family. They all helped support him. But that attitude that you see out there, that riding style, that he got a chance, he cooked, that, ah, that's him. That's cool, man. That's cool. So, hey, digging. Welcome. Welcome to the club. Your first ever one. First ever one. Always special. But guys, listen. Listen to me when I tell you this. Welcome to the danger zone. Because it's here. And y'all might be in trouble. Because this dude, he crazy. He crazy. So please, please, let's give him a standing ovation. That, 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 that. That, clap, 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 clap. Hey, Deegan, congratulations, kid. You are the champion. No, you are. No, you are. You are. All because Hayden Deegan wanted to do it. And it is cool to see. I'm impressed, kid. Yeah, you win. There's other champions. <laughs> yeah, you had 25 seconds. <laughs> but the fact is, you wanted to go out there and do, and you wanted to win that bad. And you can see it a little bit. You saw it when he didn't want Tom Vial to have anything. And when you go back to all those, when guys think they might have a chance, Hayden lets you know that they don't have a chance. And it's no point intended to chance. It ain't even about him. I thought he wrote good. He's, he's fine. This is by Hayden and his attitude of, I'm going to shut the Wi-Fi off and turn my hotspot on because I need internet. But I ain't giving him the internet. And if you don't have internet, just like the kids around here, just like these millennials or whatever, ah, I don't know what to do. 
I don't know what to do. Sorry for blowing out your ear, but that's what it is. So please, please hit it for him. Suntan, next on fire. Yes, Hayden Deegan, you are a champion. And as I said before, welcome to the danger zone. Congrats, kid. Congrats, Brian, Star Race, and Yamaha. I ain't congratulating y'all. That's all y'all do is y'all win. Y'all got babies on top of babies on top of babies. Y'all probably already got Hayden replaced by 2050, baby. Hayden, you need to, you need to look out because they're going to replace you. They already looking at it. So wrong what they do because they got little Junior who's not even born yet, whose parents not even met yet. They haven't even went on the first date. They haven't even thought about that. They're going to replace you with that kid. So that's because that's what they do. Star racing. Baby factory. Champions made up. They bring old babies, new babies. Well, hey, Deegan. You their baby now. Anyways, congratulations, kid. And Levi Kitchen. I ain't leaving you out, son. I ain't leaving you out. First moto, you're out front. You're out front. Then you started fading. And then you really fade. And I'm impressed with Levi. I, I said this on the broadcast. I was impressed with him because he was fading. I was like, damn, man. Either something wrong with his motorcycle or something wrong with him. But then when he went by the mechanics there and he didn't wave at the mechanics, I knew it was him. Because as I said, when we like we out there racing, if something went wrong with the motorcycle, oh, you best believe that we want to blame the mechanics. And we'll let it be known. That's what we'll do. Levi didn't do that. You try to look the other way. Go into mechanics. Mechanics over here. You go like this. Ah, I'm pulling the tail off. I'm not going to read the pit board because I don't want to know what it says. It's like one of those texts that you get, you know, the text is going to be bad. You try to like open it. And you don't like try to look at it. Try to delete it like real quick. Or you'd be like, all right, look real quick and pretend to your mind that that text didn't happen because you really didn't put the effort in and look at it. Well, that's what you'd be trying to do when you know it's you. And Levi was out there, first motor. He started fading. He was sitting down, going up the finish line. He was sitting down, landing. And I was like, oh, man, yeah, he looks like he's tired. But Levi fought. Like, he fought. That's hard to do because once you start going backwards, which he started, it's easy to keep going back. But Levi figured it out. He got better. And because he fought more and because Chance decided to flip over the last lap, it like moved him up and he ended up getting third in the situation that, yeah, he was in fourth, right? The point is, is that Levi was running two or whatever, two old lot, two side something, and he dropped down like five seconds again because he recovered. And then he came out to Sakamoto and played that race perfectly. Played it perfectly. Beautiful. Somebody who knows how to win races. I was talking about this to Jason um, last weekend. I'm jumping off subject a little bit, but this kind of reflects on Levi. I was like, man, I, Hunter Lawrence won that first moto last weekend because he out, he was out thinking Chase. Like he figured out and adapted better than Chase. You know, line selection, doing this. Like he was able to adjust as the racetrack. And some tracks and some riders, when you're in cert certain situations, you can win a race without like being the fastest. Like you can actually outthink somebody and people don't realize that like it ain't all about going fast, which it is about going fast. And if you can't go fast, then you ain't gonna last. But you gotta be able to go fast. But when you're tired or maybe the, you know, you, the other guy's faster and you know his tendencies, this is worth studying and realizing competition and realizing all the off work mentally off the motorcycle comes important. Well, when you know your competition, then you know, okay, if, all right, speed-wise, I ain't going to beat him, but I know he doesn't like going outside, for instance. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to make him go outside. Like, so you start figuring out other ways to beat him, even though, like, he's faster than you. And I felt like Hunter did that last weekend at um, Unadilla. Well, this weekend, Sakamoto, Levi played that race perfectly because I think he realized, okay, it's Chance Hymas, right? Chance is faster. Chance is young. So Chance, I don't know if Chance knows, like, he needs to pass, pass me right now. I don't know if Chance knows that. Chance 
gets to him, Chance is getting frustrated because he knows that Levi is tired. And Jason Thomas, we were talking about on the broadcast that, hey, this is why riders don't say anything, you know, about being sick or whatnot. It's because riders would know. Yeah, I mean, that that is true. We talk about riders should be more open and, you know, this pot calling the kettle black. When you're, like, hurt, broken foot, you're walking around, limping around. Like, there's no sense of, like, not saying anything because you got one leg, whatever. Like, we all can see that. It's not like we're going to run out there and kick it. But being sick, they could backfire if they do know. Why it could backfire? Because, like, second motor with Levi. Fact is, if Chance didn't realize that he was sick, then Chance wouldn't realize why he's sitting down. Or is those mistakes that he's making is the reason I'm being able to catch him because – what is that for? Like, is he making mistakes? But because you know he's sick, then you know why that is happening, and then which gives you an advantage to be like, okay, I'm going to attack him because I know he's sick. I know he doesn't have the energy. I'm going to get him. Well, Levi knew that, and Chance, because he's young, or maybe he just couldn't do it, partly track, partly because uh, maybe Levi didn't let him do it. Second moto, like, Chance was there, and he needed to pass Levi. Levi gave him every opportunity to like beat him. Levi was on that edge. Like, look, if you pass me, I'm just going to try to pass you back real quick. But if I can't, I'm tired, bro. I'm tired. But I'm going to make you work for it. But you're going to have to pass me. And Chance didn't do that, which allowed Levi to continue, continue. And as I said on broadcast, I'm like, well, you need if he don't pass him in the next few laps, I don't even know if he's going to pass him because Levi is going to realize and just get energy because we're close to the race. When that mechanic put on those eight laps left, Chance should have smacked him. He should have smacked Levi. Ah, Levi, that didn't help him. He was like, oh, man, eight laps? Eight laps? All the mechanics out there, listen to this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Especially when you know your rider tire. Hey, any five. Five is the max. Five is the max. Don't put halfway. Don't put it halfway. You know how many times like I was tired in the moto that I got halfway that I was like, oh my God, I got even more tired because the dude had halfway. Sometimes you get halfway at like 14, 40, and sometimes you get halfway at like 11 or 12, depending on lap times, depending on when you catch it. So those eight laps was like that. It was like, wait, I'm only halfway here when you only got like 10 minutes left? Mind control. Well, anyways, he put that on there, but Chance didn't capitalize. So Levi was there and he would go fast where Chance could pass him at, slow down, try to rest up. Chance get close to him, go fast. And what it was doing was frustrating Chance because he knew something wasn't right. So when I mean Levi played that race perfectly, he executed it in a sense of he wasn't the fastest. He was tired, but because he knows how to maneuver, he's been around the sport. He did what he needed to do for the short periods that he needed to do it in order to achieve the long, the long game. And Chance couldn't get around him and Levi literally won that race because he out he was out thinking he played it perfectly because he wasn't feeling good that's impressive and what also is impressive when you look at Levi besides the kitchen getting shut down by the fire marshal at the hometown didn't even count why they even bring it up don't even care about that race <laughs> whatever why should go didn't happen Levi's won last three out of four races Levi's getting like he was in Supercross when he was like damn dude just better than y'all so Last weekend, Hey Deacon got him first moto. Like, yep, that, that did happen. But Levi was there. Second moto, Levi was just good. This weekend, Levi was good until he got tired. Then he wasn't that good. Then he got good again. And in second moto, like, he wasn't good, but he was good enough. And he was better than everybody else, which doesn't make any sense. But it makes all the sense because Levi was just better than everybody else when he wasn't better than everybody else. And what he got was this. And he got another one. Third one out of four races. Four out of five. Five out of four. All I know is that Levi won. Hit it for him, please. Suntan, next on fire. So Levi Kitchen, <coughs> sick and all. You were sick with it. Congratulations. That's impressive. So everybody else, keep the glass. Chance, keep doing what you're doing. You can see him getting better. You can see him starting to feel like that speed, what he was able to do at uh, Unadilla. First moto coming up passing those guys. You notice that with Chance now. Go back to the beginning part of the year. He wasn't doing that. Like, he wasn't doing that. Now he believes that he can achieve. And now he knows that eventually, like, he's faster than those guys. So you start seeing it more. And it's just going to be a matter of time before, like, he figures it out. And dude's going to be good. 
telling he's going to be good, but he hasn't gotten there yet. But he's starting to get there. But all that being said, Levi, you got the neck burn. Congratulations. Chance, you're doing good. Julian, good to see you out there, bro. Jalik, you're swelling up on those fools. Tom, it's going to be the year of what is, man? What is? You riding really good. Results don't say that, but you riding really good. AP, I'm feeling like I'm about to go jam on. I'm about to AP. But I don't even know why I threw AP in there because, you know what? I threw him in there because I'm feeling good because I'm talking about 250 class. I just feel like AP in. But all that being said, all those guys did all that stuff. But it was in the welcome to the danger zone. Hey, Deegan, this is your time. This is your championship. Congratulations from me personally and from all of us and all the people at TV land. He is your champion. Hey, Deegan, congratulations. All right, people. Well, that is it. That is it from round 11, 20, wait, 30. No, what is it? 27? I don't know. I just know that's it from Buzz Creek where we witness history. Not like a history we ain't seen before, but something that mentally we haven't seen before. As I was saying, with Hayden Deegan riding down, we witnessed Chase Sexton. We saw that before we witnessed Hunter Lawrence. We saw that before we witnessed Levi. We saw that before, but we didn't see this. And what we didn't see was something that we didn't see. Look here, people. Enjoy. It's great. We got one race left. Your boy be there. Let's enjoy the racing. Let's enjoy it. Yeah, he going to say something that you don't like, and you're going to hear something that you don't like, but he's also going to witness something that you do like and you do appreciate. So let's just like it together. Let's not like nothing, which makes no sense. Let's not like nothing. But that would, wait, that would be anyways. It was just beautiful to watch. And he's going to be different moving forward. The kid's different. He's different. Look here, people. I'm different. I'm a different person walking in the dark than I am with the lights on. I'm a different. And why did I say that? Because, I don't know, think of something in your life and put that together, and that's what I mean. Anyways, that was it from Butts Creek, where we saw what we saw. And I'll see you one more round left. Put a pro motocross series. But, hey, Deegan, congratulations. Chase Sexton, congratulations. Hunter Lawrence, keep your head up. I got to go because I'm about to AP in this joint. I'm feeling like APN. Let's AP.